Hey everyone, welcome back uh, for another episode. Uh, today we're going to continue where we left off last time uh, in what I'm calling the Broken Engine Saga. Uh, parts have started to come in, so that's exciting. And uh, we're going to be opening up some boxes and have a look at what I bought. I'll also give you my general rebuild plan and possible timeline to completion at the end of this video. Uh, before we begin, I ask that if you're liking the videos that I put out and you like what you're seeing today, don't be shy. You go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification button so you're aware, you know, when the next video comes out. Uh, also, before we begin, uh, I have to mention that it's important you understand I am not an engine guy at all. Heaven help me. Uh, not an engine guy at all. Uh, or an AME, for that matter. Uh, although the engine in my plane was a certified engine when I bought it, uh, and I have the complete original logs in my possession, the engine is no longer considered certified, and any maintenance work that uh, I do falls under that home-built experimental rule. Uh, I do, however, always consult and seek their AME's advice when dealing with any issues, and I even have them do the work if it's beyond my personal capabilities. I suggest you do the same. Uh, my personal experience uh, as an experimental airplane builder spans about, mm, I guess, 35 years, which includes, of course, building my Lancer that I currently fly, uh, a midget Mustang, and a Team Minimax Ultralight. Uh, I've also helped out. Uh, on uh, doing some parts on a couple of RV6s and an RV4. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, uh, the good news is that when it comes to this engine, it's not all uh, doom and gloom. Oh, God. Uh, we discovered last episode that the camshaft needed replacing, or so I was told. Uh, I was also told to swap out the lifters as well. So I had everything fresh and new uh, when they were installed. So I went up and bought that uh, as well. Uh, we're also going to open those boxes in a bit and have a look at well as well as put the old camshaft and new camshaft next to each other and convince myself that I was right to, to spend all that money. Uh, in the area of the cylinders and pistons, I brought them uh, to get measured out and everything falls within specs, which is also good news. However, I decided to extend my credit just a little more and buy some high compression cylinders. Uh, those extra points on the horsepower scale are going to help me in the high density uh, airports that I fly from in the summer months. Uh, as it relates to those pistons, I was kind of lucky because uh, I um, uh, found an engine shop uh, about three hours away by car that happened to have them in stock. Of course, why take a car uh, when you can fly there? Unfortunately, I don't have an airplane, but I happen to know a guy who also has a Lancer. Uh, so I rung him up and uh, asked him for a lift. Uh, the great thing is, is that in a Lancer, it's usually a third on average, a third of the time it takes you to drive somewhere, uh, that's how fast you get there. So so essentially a three-hour car ride is about one hour uh, in the Lancer. So uh, like the Beverly Hillbillies, uh, we packed up the uh, plane and moved it to Beverly. Uh, actually, no, we went to Villeneuve Airport, uh, again, at about an hour away. Alberta Aero Engine is located at the Villeneuve Airport, which is uh, approximately northwest uh, of Edmonton here in Alberta. It's important to understand that they didn't ask me to mention them, nor am I getting anything free for mentioning them. I'm only bringing them up uh, in this video because they have one thing that's very, very important to me, and that's great customer service. I spoke with Cindy at Alberta Aero Engine at least three times before ever placing an order. When my engine was first dismantled and I was all depressed, uh, I had so many questions as I was confused about what was going on, and she answered every single one with a no-rush attitude. So obviously, when it's time for me to spend some money, I definitely go back to see them. Uh, they're located at Hangar 38 uh, on the south side of the airport. I've added the information down below in case anyone is interested in getting some work done. Dalson, the Tony sent you. <laughs> uh, maybe in future episodes, uh, once the engine is all put together, we'll fly out there and do a feature story on them or something like that. We'll see. So I picked up two things from Alberta Aero. The first being four complete uh, superior ring sets. Um, I have chrome cylinders and that requires special rings. Uh, I assumed it meant that I needed some chrome rings, but nay, nay, my assumption was incorrect. There's a matching thing that you got to do and I don't know what it is. But whatever these are made out of, uh, 
it's definitely a different material than what I had in my airplane before. Uh, and given these are the ones that I'm supposed to put in there, um, I'm a little worried, uh, or maybe it's a good thing that uh, I'm swapping these up. Next stop. Now, if you got kids in the room, you got to send them away. Because I'm going to use a term, uh, you know, that's not uh, child friendly. And this is aviation porn. Uh, if you've never heard the term of aviation porn, I give you the combustion technology uh, pistons. Uh, these things are, are, are beautiful. Uh, I've, ne I've never held a piston that was brand new in my hand. And uh, these are pretty big, but they're, they're, they're gorgeous. Um, let's just take them out of here. Check this baby out. Woo! Oof! Oof! Definitely aviation porn right here. Okay, you'll bring the kids back in. Uh, neat thing is, is of course, um, everything is balanced out. So there are two pistons. You'll see the, the weight over here. You've got uh, two pistons that are exactly the same, and then another two pistons that are uh, like a gram off or whatever it is. Uh, the idea is, is that you cross um, place them in the engine, apparently. Uh, that way, you know, when they're pulling and pushing everything is all balanced out uh when you're running the engine the rest of the parts that i've purchased so far all come from one place uh you're probably thinking aircraft spruce and if you were in this particular case you'd be wrong i got all my parts from a place called kdex uh since i moved out here to calgary it's pretty much the only place that i go to pick up parts for my plane as a matter of fact in this particular case every single part i purchased was less expensive than any other competitor out there uh I, I really don't know why but maybe they're you know it's related to the fact that they're an authorized superior dealer or something i i really don't know never question a good uh, deal in aviation uh so um here are the lifters uh this is what i got i actually got uh, two boxes of them um you're not going to see too much but uh um you know, I don't know if I'm going to add a picture uh, onto this uh, later on in editing, but these don't look any newer than the ones that I have um, or had in the engine uh, at that time. So uh, I guess it's a good vibe, but they don't look any newer than the other ones. Uh, and uh, up next, uh, the famous, the famous uh, camshaft. So uh, this is the whole reason behind the entire project. Um, I, I opened this for the first time just minutes before uh, I started the video and I just cut the tape. I don't even know what this looks like inside. It's actually been sitting in my house for weeks now. Uh, as I wait for all the other parts, I figured why well, look at it in case I ordered the wrong part. Uh, I don't know. So this is the actual very first time I look at this. Uh, it's pretty well packaged. We're gonna do an unveiling here. Uh, sorry for all the, the noise, wrapped and all. I don't know what's going to happen with this. Uh, it's in a plastic. Uh, I don't want to take out the plastic. Uh, oh, this is uh, really, really nice compared to the other one. It's uh, it's real brand new. Um, uh, I'll uh, take a shot of them uh, side by side. I'll leave it in the plastic because I, I, I don't want to remove it out of gear. It's well greased and all or well oiled, I should say. Um, there is a part that goes in here that's in the old one and I'm gonna remove it and it's the shaft for the, um, uh, the uh, you know, uh, the tack. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna remove it from the old shaft and put it on there. So, um, yeah, that's it. So I've also got a bunch of gaskets that I may have mentioned already in this video. Uh, no need to show all those things. Um, and uh, I've got like new bearings coming in and a whole bunch of other parts. Uh, whenever I get them, uh, at the last installment of this video, whenever that'll be, that is after the engine's been assembled and uh, you know I'm gonna hang it on the plane, whatever that video comes out and hopefully really soon, uh, we'll get to the timeline shortly. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide uh, in that video, uh, you know, at the bottom of that video, I'm going to provide a complete list of all the parts, the part numbers that I bought, uh, as well as the prices that I paid. Uh, so, you know, hopefully it can help somebody out there. For the last part of this show and tell, I'm going to answer a question. And the question is, what does one do when one doesn't have an airplane 
and has a lot of time on his hands in the evenings. Well, that's easy. One decides to paint his engine. Yep, I went there. Uh, because I had to wait around for parts, I decided to clean up the engine and give it a new paint job. Uh, given that the airplane is orange and black and, and the HUD pilot theme is orange and black, I figured I might as well paint the engine orange and black. Uh, so uh, let me grab this. So here's what one of the cylinders look like uh, now. Uh, ain't you pretty? Uh, it took a while. And uh, here's what the accessories case looks like um uh, all orange so the rest of the uh engine case will be orange as well and wherever you see uh, kind of grayish right now uh or whatever the color of the metal is uh this uh highlight will end up being black uh why uh, because i can i guess and uh so that's uh, been going on uh as well all right, so it's promised in the beginning the timeline. So this has been going on for a couple of months now. I've been gathering parts. There have been a lot of delays, as everyone knows who's building an engine. There aren't too many parts out there. So there's a, always a wait, a wait, a wait, and a wait. As I mentioned in the last video, uh, a lot of my delays are not only for waiting for, for parts, but, but me delaying to order the parts uh, just because I'm assembling the money or you know gathering enough money to be able to get what I need when I need it. So uh, I'm hoping as of uh, while making this video right now, I'm hoping that in maybe the next week, I was supposed to get parts this week and they didn't arrive. So I'm hoping that by next week they will arrive and that will be uh, the completeness of all the parts except two tiny little bushings that I ordered at the last minute, which are also back ordered by a week or two. Uh, I'm hoping um, you know, that the shop that's putting the uh, engine together might have a couple of extras here and there, uh, but just in case it might be delayed a couple of weeks. So the hope is that by the third week of February, that uh, all the parts will be in, everything will be there. Uh, the engine will have uh, been rebuilt and I'll have it back in my hands, uh, you know, um, let's say by March 1st. Uh, the only issue is, is that I've got work commitment that's gonna be taking me away uh, maybe for half the month uh, in the month of February uh, and, uh, you know, and the beginning of uh, March as well. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to hang the engine on the plane by then, but the hope is, uh, you know, who knows, maybe mid-March uh, you know, she'll, she'll start up, uh, you know, for the first time uh, again. Okay. So, uh, if you haven't done so already, uh, you know, uh, you know, hit that, that like button, go see some of the other videos. It helps the channel out quite a bit. I really appreciate your support. Uh, you're an awesome bunch of folks, uh, that watch my videos. So always great comments. I love it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't to pass it along, pass the link along. You know, I'm trying to grow this channel over the years. It's a great hobby. I love, love editing film and no, I don't make a lot of money doing this at all. Uh, I'd starve to death if this is what I was doing for a living. Uh, so until the next one, uh, take care and we'll see you then.